The first day NBA 2K19 launched, I'd say most people in the community agreed there was two things that needed to be fixed. The first thing was stealing. That was that that was almost unanimous, right? Across the board, stealing was incredibly overpowered. Everybody left and right, whether you were a sharpshooter or a lockdown defender with your grand badge, was stealing the basketball. I know it took him like two months to fix that, but they finally toned it down. And I think it's at a good point where it is right now. The second thing was shot contest. In NBA 2K19, unlike previous 2Ks, there's no more automatic contests you have to manually contest. That was new for a lot of people. And probably the thing that took the most getting used to was the fact that even when you pushed your right stick to contest somebody, there was a delay from when you clicked it to when he put his hand up. And so last year we got way quicker contests. This year we have a longer delay when we're going to contest somebody. But that's not the main problem people had with the shot contest. The main problem was this. If my player is six foot five, my six foot five Pierce Sharp was trying to contest a seven foot stretch bit, I would have to click triangle to jump at him to defend him properly. Because if you're playing against a competitive ass player and you don't jump, he will hit the shot every single time, even if you smother him in his face. I had a couple people tell me, Agent, I'm a taller player, I should be able to shoot over top of you. Then there will, no more guards will exist in the game, if you think that's the way it should be. Because everyone's just gonna shoot over top of you, every single time. And there are times where a 7-3 glass cleaner needs to boom, dunk on a 5-6 playmaker, right? But when it comes to contesting three-point shots, that creates a major issue, a major lapse, a giant hole in the game. In my last 2K drama alert I uploaded, I talked about g Sice's tweet, and he was basically saying the same thing. He was saying at launch, he saw the issue. And even though he was talking about it, he was getting a lot of backlash for doing it. A few months go by, we're four or five months into the launch of the game, and now everybody is seeing the same issue. There was a funny tweet Duke put out that said, Davis complained about the contest system on shot craters on day one. 2K listened and fixed it, giving us the shot contest system we have today, therefore creating the stretch big everyone hates. So basically, Davis ruined NBA 2K19. And while it's very funny to make fun of Davis for silly things like the fact that he dropped out of high school, that he has a lot of acne on his face, you know, the usual, Davis is not even remotely the reason why it is the way it is today. Let me give you guys a history lesson! because I think you guys need it. A couple weeks into the game's launch, Mike Wang was super active on Twitter. He was communicating with the community and shit, you know. He was saying hi to this person, and we're gonna fix this to that person. And amongst those tweets was this one of him saying, 918, NBA 2K19 gameplay tuning update tomorrow morning. Brings a better balance to perimeter buff versus inside nerf. Shot contests for fewer blown layups and less OP outside shooting. And also a slight reduction in the effectiveness of steals out of body ups and fadeaway threes. So Mike Wang recognized the issue. He definitely heard the complaints. There's a lot of people saying like, my God, this many contested shots should not be going in. And it wasn't just to stretch bigs. If you remember at launch, shot creators were catching the heat too because if, if you were taking longer to contest somebody because it was done manually and shot creators could just fade in your face regardless, it was getting annoying to defend them. In the exact moment we realized all we need is a tall player to contest a shot, shot creators became obsolete. He followed up with that tweet saying, if you're already taking smart shots, you shouldn't feel much of a difference. This update will just help reward good perimeter defense and punish people for forcing contested shots. I should probably make it even stronger, but I don't want to make any drastic changes. Now, I remember that exact day because me and almost every other YouTuber hopped on. We're like, all right, we want to see what the difference is. And so on that specific day, everybody woke up, tried the game and realized the same thing. And we were like, Mike, come on, man. A little bit more, dude. It barely made a difference. Not one that anybody can notice off the eye. So Mike dropped a follow-up tweet saying, today's shooting update was a bit too conservative. Taking another stab tomorrow morning. Perimeter contest will see a stronger buff in Park and Pro-Am. Layup percentages get another boost as well. Thanks for the feedback. Mike realized the same thing. It wasn't enough. And so what he did was he changed the shot contest system drastically. And for a two day period, the shot contest system wasn't perfect, but it solved the initial issues we were having. And as you can imagine, once the stretch bigs realized they wasn't shooting over top people anymore, everybody was furious. The shot creators and the stretch bigs took the biggest L's of all, and pretty much every other archetype just took a W off the fact that the other ones were nerfed. And this was the exact same time many people in the community were saying things like, the game was perfect at launch, stop changing it so much. And so here Mike Wang is trying to figure out what the best decision to do is. People are complaining shot contest system is broken 
broken. Everyone's shooting over top me. Shot creators shooting in my face. The, the manual shot contest is too slow, is what the people are saying. And then on the other side, they're saying, stop changing things too much. You're gonna change everything just like you did in previous years. You're gonna ruin the game, and then we're gonna end up with a shell of a product. And so the result of that was just Mike Wang just realized there's no winning. No matter what you do, there's no winning because the other side is gonna complain. And literally, if you scroll through his tweets, he kind of just gave up tweeting. He did like one update tweet in December, and that was about it. All his other tweets are just retweets for park events or NBA 2K League promotion. Because I get it, not everyone is gonna want the same thing. Maybe your definition of a perfect 2K is gonna be different than mine or most other people. Maybe there's something fundamentally wrong with the way that the shot contest system is, and it's not as simple as moving a slider to fix it. But I feel like, and I'm gonna say this once again, this is not the responsibility of the community to get feedback. You literally have game testers. What are those guys doing? I'm curious what they do before launch. Get those guys out, all right? And hire people that actually try hard on this game. The guys that play my career. We need some park guys. We need some pro -am guys. Because those are the ones who are gonna help you make the good decisions, man. You can't just pick up a QA guy off the street who worked on Watch Dogs 1 once upon a time. He's not qualified for the position. Because he's gonna, he's gonna play my career and he's getting like, oh no, the shooting is fine. And then when the good players hop on, here we are destroying the game. This shouldn't be like an active beta test. And I know Mike Wang said it in the past that he doesn't want to make too many changes to the game because they've done that in previous years, especially in 2K17, but also in 2K18. And they realize it just ruins the game. You can't keep changing the meta of the game every two weeks because another side complained. But at the same time, I think we all recognize, even the people that have stretch bigs, that yeah, it's a little too far. We need to find a common ground, ladies and gentlemen. It's not Davis's fault, it's not any YouTuber's fault. If YouTubers had that much power, then the game would be perfect, right? If I could just make a video like this and everything would change, and I had that insane type of influence, then the game would be perfect. I would never have to make another video angry about 2K because the game would be exactly the way I want it. But the reality is, the only time we've ever seen a YouTuber flex their influence to get something done was I believe in 2K17 where Hack the Tank made a video telling everybody to vote on a poll to make the twos make it take it again because for some reason 2K changed it. That was literally the only time I could think of where a YouTuber is directly responsible for a change in the game. Unless everybody is actively disappointed about something, there's no way something's gonna change. As long as it's split down the middle, it makes no sense for 2K to make a change. It's good, it's better for them, and it's probably better for the rest of the community if we just leave it alone. All right, that was a little history lesson. Mike Wang, we need you back, my guy. I know some people are gonna get angry regardless of what you do, but we need to give feedback, and the game needs to change and adjust. If there's something broken or overpowered, you can't just leave it. It doesn't make any sense. The game is gonna die. And we're at unprecedented territory, ladies and gentlemen, because 2K17 was a broken game, but it was still lit. A lot of people played it. 2K18 was just flat out dead. This time last year, the only interesting thing in 2K18 for me was Pro-Am. And a lot of people was just tired of the park. The same old regular, gray, depressing ass park. This is 2K19, man. You guys did a lot of things right. Don't ruin it by letting this game go. Make this game great, man. I remember in 2K16, you guys added a park to Rivet City like in the middle of summer or some man. You guys were just actively adding stuff instead of saving it and hoarding it for the next 2K. And I'ma say it in every single video I can, ladies and gentlemen, the solution to all of these problems is really, say it with me now, to hire more people. Because if the problem is you got too many people working on 2K20, then just hire more people to work on 19 or vice versa. No matter which way you flex it, if you just hire more qualified individuals, you will be all right. And it's not like 2K doesn't have the money. They have I want to say infinite resources. You know how much money they make every year? The budget for the game is probably pretty tiny because they don't have to remake the game. They just improve on the previous one. And each year they make billions and billions of dollars off the game. You need to hire more people. That's where I want to leave it, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Duke, you're wrong. Uh, but I hope we can all find a middle ground as a community, man. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, drop a like, subscribe to the channel, click on one of these four. No, do not put that in my ear. Tell them to hire people. Tell them to hire people. Two kids. That's what I was trying to do. It's it not, not on, bro. I did. I was behind you, but like. Damn. <laughs> All right, just hire people, guys. Just, just hire them, bro. Hire more people, qualified people, not those garbage ass people. EA hires. <laughs> 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 you gotta go. I'm gonna get that clipped up for sure.